off. <laughs> what is up, JL Life? Modell here. Does it bother you that anyone can get underneath your hood when you're not around? Well, stay tuned. So today we're going to be installing the Stealth Hood Lock System from Last Fit. But this is actually pretty nifty. What this does is uses your key fob, unlock and lock buttons to lock your hood and unlock your hood. So this system is, it's, it's waterproof. It will work in conjunction with a front mounted camera and according to their website, it doesn't work with a manual transmission. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install it. Shouldn't take too long, relatively easy. It's all plug and play, which I like. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is remove the grill of your JL or Gladiator. To do that, I'm gonna obviously have to skip this point because it's cheap plastic parts and I've broken them all over the course of the last four years. So on the top of your, your grill, there's all these little holes. Boop. I've literally broken all but this one. And you're gonna pull out these pins. You're gonna pull off the grill. I'm gonna have to take off my damn. So after removing the top pins, just to kind of show you what I did, these six clips just wedge into these holes. And the best way of just pulling this out is just reaching your hand behind and using your other hand to grip underneath from the bottom and just pull both hands at the same time and it pops right out. I've done mine so many times, it's I'm surprised it doesn't fall off on the freeway. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is taking out these two top T30 bolts, uh, these little cross, cross members, I, I don't know what to call them, but. The Darth Vader nose. Then you're gonna get the locking module. That's the one with the little air nozzle fittings. And then you're going to line and reinstall your bolts. Don't tighten it all the way. No, never tighten all the way. Not until all the bolts are started. I've made this mistake a hundred times. And these nozzles rotate, so don't worry about that right now. The next step is going to be installing the air tubes. You have two different air tubes. One has a white, one's black. If you look over here, you have a white sticker and a black sticker. Just making it simple. Wait, you're gonna do this is remove nut from air fitting. Insert onto tube. Push onto nipple. Oh, don't break it. Be gentle with those nipples. <sighs> rough with it that's what they like <laughs> and just screw back on and do the same thing with the other one again matching the white to white and obviously the black to black tin mill wrench just to tighten these down create your airtight seal Nothing too vigorous, just nice and snug. So unfortunately, the kit didn't come with zip ties, but it requires zip ties for installation. Luckily, I got zip ties. But you're gonna route your air tubes along 
this bracket. angle bracket. So you're gonna get your, your two tubes, you're gonna slip it into this guy, this hole. You should be able to reach through the bottom. That's what I said. Ah. Whew, got him. Pull it through without obviously kinking the hose. You don't wanna do that. You're going. You wanna focus? I am a professional and I don't have time for this. You're gonna take the tubes and you're gonna run it along this piping harness. Harness tube. It's just gonna be running alongside of it. <laughs> these tubes wanna go a certain, these air tubes wanna go a certain way. It's not the way I want it to go. There we go. Get zip ties. And zip tie them to these, these smaller tubes. Tube. So you're gonna wanna run these through the firewall on the driver's side to find the driver wall. This is a catch can that's not on your, your stock Jeep, but right underneath it. Right where I'm pointing my flashlight. My camera person can focus. Focus. Very close. Is the firewall. Mine's already been cut open uh, to allow for ease of access. Uh, of course, it would be much easier without the catch can in the place that it's in. I want to just take out the inner fender. She's being stubborn right now. Did you get it? I think so. I'm using my phone to look. Jiggle things around. Oh, there it is. She got one in. I need two. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I got slightly littler arms. You do. So going inside the driver's side, next thing we're gonna need to do is remove this panel. And it's just, you can use a trim removal or just not care and use your hands. I don't care. But yeah, it's held on by these plastic clips and it's just the same concept as the grill. You just gotta pull. Uh, but these ones being plastic, there is a possibility of these snapping. So, so the next bit we're going to install is gonna be uh, this nut. Let me show you how to do this. So this is the hole we're gonna be doing it on. <laughs> going to take off the sticky tape sticky back I don't got nails it makes it hard sounds like an insult sticky back <laughs> damn I uh, got it all right so what you're going to do with the sticky side pointing towards you you're going to go behind get the the bolt that is associated with it start it and Get it in a position where you can just get it on and press. Get it on. So this is the control module. This is the bracket it mounts to. Super easy. It lines up to that hole and that hole. Uh, just make sure the plug is pointed towards the center of the Jeep. The wires, the air tubes are pointing to the outside of the Jeep. Make sure, oh God, that stunk so fierce. <laughs> Holy shit. Is that stuff so fierce? That was like right in my face. <laughs> so oh my gosh. <laughs> Dying. 
washer. Would you have preferred it a fart? Yeah, if it wasn't directly in my face, I would have preferred smelling some ass. <laughs> Rather than you burping directly in my face. I did not burp in your face. Some hangover smell. I'm like. Oh my gosh. I'm like two feet away from your face. Nearly died. <laughs> that was two. That was two feet away from your face. Did you feel I the didn't air? I didn't even blow it like that. Oh my gosh. I didn't blow it out. I just burped and breathed. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Like, give me a screwdriver. I didn't know it was stinky. Next thing you're going to need to do is loosen that bolt. That bolt, you're only loosening it. Don't take it out. Because that bracket will slide right over it. Until loosen. Be mindful of these wires. Slide that over your the hole and so after tightening this one don't tighten this one quite yet you need to get the manual disconnect the um, this lock let's see how I'm going to mount this on I think it goes like this well then how the hell am I supposed to tighten the damn thing so the best way of doing this is kind of, the less I'm going to have to tighten with a box wrench like a poor person, the better. So it'll slide over the, the nut and you'll have to get back there with a box wrench. I can't fit. I'm stuck. Okay, I'm just going to feel for it. Can't really get a good eye on this. No, I cannot. A ratcheting box wrench would be nice. Don't oh. you have that little side nah. blades one? Like that. After you get that all tightened in, you're gonna pull out the wiring harness that was provided. Uh, there's a bunch of plugins. Uh, first, you're gonna get the white one and it's gonna plug in up on the side of the, the modular box. Backwards. Then you are going to grab the OB, OBD plug. You're gonna plug in right over I'm just going to route this wire or tuck this wire up. Plug that in. You're going to get the small guy and plug it into the... You're going to get the small guys, plug those in together. Then you're going to run this guy. Through here, I'll show you a little bit closer. Uh, you just... Pull off the carpet on both sides. Get yourself a long stick. I got, I'm using a screwdriver. Tape it on. And it will go through here. Get it up and out on your side. Almost done. So, once you open it, pull that 
towards you, pops off, go up here. This little clip, just push it up and over so it slides down. And empty all your contents. Yes. Now we just plug it into here. So it's super important you get the right one or you're gonna blow up your Jeep. Oh. Nah, I'm just kidding, it can go into any one. So the last bit to do is just grab your tubes and plug them into these shark bite-ish connectors. That's it, tuck that up out of the way. But that's it, it's all installed. You just gotta put everything back together and just tuck your wiring out of the way. Am I about to blow up? So after getting everything installed, it's come in, turn your vehicle to run, leave it that way for about a minute. This is to allow the Jeep to communicate with this module box in order for it to work. After a minute, you should be able to shut it off. And it should work now. So what this product does is that it uses your key fob to both lock and unlock the hood. While it's locked, it holds the hood down to the point you can't get to the hook. Hitting unlock. Allows the hood to pop open. So this little lever, once you hit lock, comes over and locks the, the latch in place, preventing you from being able to move it. Hitting unlock retracts it. And some of you may be thinking, well, what happens if the battery dies? You're not gonna be able to get under the hood. Well, that's a valid point. There is a workaround around that, and it has to do with this 12 volt power adapter, uh, implying that anyone would be able to work. This is the one that's included. In the event your battery does die and it's locked, it is true, you will not be able to unlock it. And I wish that was different. I would prefer there to be a manual release. The thing I like about this one compared to the hood locks up front is that, well, the hood locks are ghastly looking. This is very seamless and quite honestly, you don't even know you have it. Now, if there was some sort of manual lock that used the key underneath the dash, this would be perfect. But this is what you got. So what you do is you find yourself a 12 volt adapter, plug in, and you run this guy. Where are you? To this plug right here. You hit the button and that will, that will manually release the lock, allowing you to get under the hood, jump-starting your vehicle. And if you do hit that little red button under the dash, make sure you push it again and don't leave it on because it will it'll drain the battery again. So just make sure you turn it off. But there is a warning system. It'll start beeping at you if you forget to turn it off, but don't forget. My biggest complaint about something like this, though, getting someone to respond with jumper cables well, that's easy. Getting someone to respond with this in the event you lose it or break it or it just gets damaged, gonna be a little bit more difficult. But guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, y'all, keep it easy.